All right, everybody, welcome back. This week we're going to take a look at doing something a little bit different with a panoramic photo. So what I've got here is a photo that I shot off of my back porch at home. And um, I am obviously kidding because that is definitely not from my back porch. I took that photo while I was on vacation at the Bahamas. I wish it was my back porch, but it's not. But anyway, what it was, it's comprised of about six or seven photos that I stitched together using Photoshop's photo merge feature. And I came up with this panoramic photo. What we're going to do is look how we can turn something like this into something like this. So just a different way to show off the panoramic photo. Looks kind of cool. It's got that little drop shadow effect on it. And again, just a different way to show off your work and kind of make it a little bit more interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with our photo here. And you can download this from the same page that you uh, clicked on to watch this video tutorial. There will be a link on there so you can download this photo if you'd like to follow along with it. And we're going to start off here. I'm going to press the tab key to show my palettes and just move my layers palette into view here because I'm kind of short on space. And what we're going to do is just make selections and copy these selections. So let's get this layers palette up. And I can actually hide this guy. Okay. So now that we're ready to go, I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee tool. I'm just going to draw a rectangular selection over part of the photo. Now I'm going to click on my background layer to make sure that that layer is targeted. And I'm going to press Control J. And what that did is it actually created a new layer from the selection that I had. So if I hide my layers, you can see there's my background layer. If I hide that, you can see there is the new layer I just created. And it just kind of punched out from that background layer, that part that was selected. But it didn't delete it from the background layer. So that's important to know here. Okay, so I've got this new part, this new layer here. We're going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to control click on this layer. That's going to load that selection. I'm going to make sure one of my selection tools are chosen here. So just click on the selection. All you need to do is just click over here on one of the marquee tools. And then it positions your cursor in the center there. Well, just drag this photo out over to the right hand side and just position it where you think you want it. And then choose, I'm going to show you a trick for this in a second too. And then just choose select transform selection. Maybe put your cursor outside that bounding box that appears and just rotate it over to the left a little bit. And then press the enter key and that confirms your selection. Click on that background layer again over here in the layers palette and press control J once again. And now that creates me two layers here. So I've got the first one and now I've got the second one on top of it. Still the same photo though. Now let's show you a little trick here. Notice when I moved that selection, I really had no way of telling what I had selected the first time. So to make things easier for you, double click on the layer or just click the little F icon and add a drop shadow to it. And we're not going to concentrate too much on the drop shadow. I'm just going to bump up the size a little bit, click on OK. See, so it adds a nice little drop shadow behind it. All you need to do is just hold down the Alt or the Option key and drag that to the other layer and it duplicates that layer style. Now that only works in Photoshop CS2, but it's a nice, easy, quick way in CS2 to duplicate a layer style. Just again, let me undo here, hold down the Alt or the Option key and drag. And as soon as I start dragging, you see that double cursor there and that'll duplicate that layer style for you onto the other layer. So now I can see what I'm working with here when I'm creating new selections. Let's do this again. I'm gonna control click on that layer. Click to make sure I have a selection tool active here. Drag this one over, and now let's choose Select, Transform Selection, and let's move this one to the right a little bit. Press Enter when you're done. Click once on the background layer to make sure it's the active layer, and press Control or Command J, and that'll duplicate it to the new, or duplicate it to a new layer. And then do that little trick, hold down the Alt or the Option key, and just drag that layer style down onto the new layer. So now we can see that part. So at this point, you're going to do it a couple more times all the way across the image here. And I know we've got uh, to make this somewhat of a downloadable video size here. What I'm going to do is just jump forward to one that is done. So all I did was just did that same thing. I just did it on two more layers over here. So now that I've got all these layers, at this point, I can hide this background layer or I can just trash it all together if I want. Or I'm going to show you a couple variations here. Maybe you like this effect. Well, maybe you want to just click on the background layer, press Control or Command U. That's going to bring up hue saturation and just bring this lightness all the way down. And maybe that gives you kind of that little back screening effect there. So there's a couple different things you can do with it. What I'm going to do is actually trash the background layer. And see my bottom layer selected here? I'm going to add a new layer underneath all the others. I'm going to do this by Control or Command clicking on that new layer icon. And what it does is that adds a layer below whatever layer I have targeted. 
Now, I'm going to set white to my foreground color, and I'm just going to press Alt or Option and Backspace, and it's going to fill it with my foreground color with white. So I've got all these layers on top of the white background. Then a couple things you can do here. Let's get the layers palette out of the way for a second, and let's just expand the window out a little bit so we can see some of that background. Let's expand the canvas. So what we're going to do is select the Crop tool, and just draw a crop around your entire photo. Now hold down the Alt or the Option key and just extend the edges out a little bit. If you notice, when I moved the right side out, the left side went with it. And then just click and drag the bottom down a little bit. Press the Enter key, and that'll extend your canvas out. And then what you want to do is click once on your background layer here and just refill it again with white. Next, let's grab our rectangular marquee tool. We'll draw a little rectangle around this. And I'm going to choose Edit stroke. I'm going to set the color to black. Click on OK and that gives me a nice little black stroke around there. And then with the type tool, just type in anything you want at the bottom. Nassau Gahamas. No. Nassau Bah. Let's put a comma in there. I can't seem to spell it right. Bahamas. There we go. And just put that in the center. Now you've got a nice little way to show off a panoramic photo. And I'll show you one more thing to take this a step further, and then we got to go. And that is, instead of just adding a drop shadow layer style to it, maybe double click on that layer style and add a bevel and emboss. And use that same little trick here. Just Alt or Option click and just drag it. Alt or Option click and drag. And just keep dragging it across all those new layers there. And now it kind of just gives you a little bit of, of a different look. We've kind of got the, those photos beveled a little bit. So hope you enjoyed this one. Again, just a nice quick way to start showing off your work. Just shows it off a little bit different way. So if you have a panoramic photo and you want to do something different with it, this is a great idea. That's about it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks.